Aloha everybody and welcome back to the Hawaii Volcano Watch update report for May 24th, 2019. There has been some minor activity on the volcano so we will be talking about the Kilauea Volcano, the Pu'u'u'u -oh -oh Crater and Mauna Loa. According to the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory weekly report that was posted for Tuesday, May 21st, 2019 at 9.22 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, the activity summary was reported as Kilauea Volcano is not erupting. Um, there is no current activity, uh, eruptive activity that is. Uh, monitoring data over the past nine months have shown relatively low rates of seismicity, deformation, and sulfur dioxide emissions at the summit and east rift zones, including the area of the 2018 eruption. For those that may not be aware, on March 26, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory downgraded the alert level of Kilauea Volcano to normal or green level. Please note, despite the change in the classification of the alert level, Kilauea remains an active volcano, and it will erupt again sometime in the future. Although we expect clear signs prior to a return to the eruption, the time frame of warning may be short. An island of Hawaii residents should be familiar with the long-term hazard map for Kilauea Volcano. Current monitoring data of the Kilauea Volcano hasn't revealed any significant changes in volcanic activity over the past week. However, generally low seismicity continues across the volcano, with earthquakes occurring primarily in the summit and south flank regions. The largest Kilauea earthquake to occur up to May 21st was on May 20th, and it was a magnitude 2.8 event south of Mauna Ulu. At a depth of about 3.6 kilometers or 2.2 miles below ground level, USGS received four felt reports following this event. Now since early March there has been some minor activity changes in the Kilauea summit. Tilt meters at the Kilauea summit have recorded modest inflationary tilt. Over almost the same time period a GPS station within the 2018 collapsed area has recorded approximately 5 centimeters or 3 inches of uplift. Satellite radar data show deformation consistent with inflation of the shallow Halima'uma'u source, confirming the trends noted by both tilt meters and GPS. One possible interpretation is that magma has begun to slowly accumulate within the shallow portion of the Kilauea summit magma system, one to two kilometers or approximately one mile below ground level. And it is in my opinion that this is something that we do need to watch because this could be indication that the uh, magma system may be recharging at some level. However, gas measurements have yet to indicate significant shallowing of large volumes of melt. And HVO continues to carefully monitor gas output at the Kilauea summit and East Rift Zone for important changes. Moving further east, GPS stations and tilt meters continue to show motions consistent with refilling of the deep east rift zone magmatic reservoir in the broad region between Pu'o'o and Highway 130. This trend has been observed since the end of the 2018 eruption, and while its significance is unclear, monitoring data does not suggest any imminent change in volcanic hazard for this area. Moving on to the Pu'u'u'u Crater, a small collapse occurred at 6.14 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, May 1, 2019, and was the last hurrah for a GPS instrument located on the crater's edge, pictured above in the red circle. The station, designated PUOC, served faithfully throughout Kilauea's 2018 eruption and was an important source of information on the shallow magma system of Pu'u'u'u. The station's last reported position showed it moving rapidly to the southeast, consistent with motion into the crater. Inset shows data transmission from April 11th through this morning of May 1st. 
monitoring of Buu OO is currently being accomplished by additional GPS and tilt stations farther from the edge of the crater. The large equipment installation near the solar panels was not affected by this morning's collapse and continues to function. However, contingency plans are in place in case collapses of the crater edge continue. The USGS photo shown is by I. Johansson and was taken on March 18, 2019 and was annotated on May 1, 2019. Now for Mauna Loa. As of Friday, May 3rd, 2019, at 10.54 a.m. Hawaii Standard Time, the Hawaii Volcano Observatory reports as the monthly update that a slight increase in the number of detected earthquakes at Mauna Loa was noted over the past month. Small earthquakes, mostly less than magnitude 2.0, continued in long active areas including beneath the northwest flank summit region and east flank. The largest earthquake for Mauna Loa over the past month was a magnitude 3.4 event on May 1st which occurred north of the summit at a depth of approximately 10.4 kilometers or 6.5 miles below ground level. USGS received three felt reports following this event. Data from global positioning systems on Mauna Loa indicate slow inflation of the summit magma reservoir system. The rates of deformation are lower than during the period of more intense unrest from 2014 to 2017. Gas and temperature data from stations on the southwest rift zone and within the summit caldera showed no significant changes over the past month. HVO continues to monitor the volcano closely and will issue another update in one month or earlier should conditions change significantly. Though the activity on Mount Loa seems to be very minor, I think it does bear to have some more scrutiny cast upon it. With that in mind, I'm going to share a little bit of background information on this volcano. Mauna Loa is the largest active volcano on Earth. Eruptions typically start at the summit and within minutes, two months of eruption onset, about half of the eruptions migrate into either the northeast or southwest rift zones. Since 1843, the volcano has erupted 33 times with intervals between eruptions ranging from months to decades. Mauna Loa last erupted 35 years ago in 1984. Mauna Loa eruptions tend to produce voluminous, fast-moving lava flows that can impact communities on the east and west sides of the island of Hawaii. Since the mid-19th century, the city of Hilo in East Hawaii has been threatened by seven Mauna Loa lava flows. Mauna Loa lava flows have reached the south and west coast of the island eight times, 1859, 1868, 1887, 1926, 1919, and three times in 1950. From 2014 through much of 2017, HVO seismic stations recorded variable but overall elevated rates of shallow, small magnitude earthquakes beneath Mauna Loa summit, upper southwest, southwest rift zone, and west flank. During that same time period, HVO measured ground deformation consistence, consistent with input of magma into the volcano's shallow magma storage system. Wrapping up the Hawaii Volcano Watch report update, we have some information dealing with PGV, HELCO, and the PUC. On May 9, 2019, the Hawaii Public Utilities Commission told HELCO in a letter that an overhead line proceeding and public hearing are required before they can move forward with the connection to PGV. HELCO responded to the PUC in a May 20, 2019 letter saying, Prior to receiving the May 9th letter to restore electric service to PGV, Hawaii Electric Light installed 13 wooden poles that are currently being used to provide 12 kilovolt distribution service to PGV. The poles, which are sized to carry 
transmission lines above the distribution lines vary in height from approximately 60 to 65 feet above the ground. Both transmission line and distribution line conductors have been installed on the poles. The company tied the new transmission lines to its 6500 line on May 8, 2019. However, none of the new transmission lines were energized. As a result of the Commission's directives, Hawaii Electric Light immediately ceased work on the transmission lines, disconnected the newly installed wires from the 6500 line, and removed the transmission conductors from the poles that are outside PGV's property. However, the company has since discovered that four of the new wooden poles, all on PGV's property, need to be immediately replaced with steel poles due to residual underground heat causing the wooden poles to smolder. The impacts of the residual heat can be fully mitigated with the use of steel poles. The company considers this to be an emergency safety concern that must be and is being addressed in advance of filing its forthcoming application for commission approval pursuant to sections 269-27.5 and 27.6 of the Hawaii Revised Statutes. Once the four steel replacement poles are installed, the conductors will be transferred over and the four wooden poles will be removed. PGV will pay for the entire cost of the existing line and replacement poles. Distribution line work is continuing to tie in service to the PGV facility, also at PGV's expense. And that'll do it for this edition of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Report. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, bell icon, and share this video. And you have an amazing morning, afternoon, and evening.